Around 30 years ago, an American rabbi gave a lecture in Miami on the, on the accomplishments of the Chafetz Chaim. And he went into detail about the life of this great sage who lived a humble life as a shoekeeper in the village of Raden in Poland. And the world recognized him as a great scholar and a tzaddik and leader. There was an extra part of the story he wanted to tell, but he was hesitant because he didn't know the, all the details of the story. But he decided, listen, I'll, I'll say what I do know. Because anything regarding the Chofetz Chaim, he was sure that whatever he says regarding the Chofetz Chaim would have a positive impact on the crowd. And it was regarding a teenage boy who was in the Chofetz Chaim's yeshiva, and somebody caught him smoking a cigarette on Shabbos, the sacred day of rest. Everyone in the school, the whole faculty was completely caught off guard. They were shocked. And some of the members believed that the boy should be expelled. However, when they got to the Chafetz Chaim, he said, Tell the boy to come to my home. At this point, the rabbi said, I don't know what the Chafetz Chaim said to the boy. They were together for a couple of minutes. I would do anything to know what he did tell him, but... We know that after this, the boy never desecrated Shabbos again. How great it would be to know what words were said. And then the, Reb, the, the rabbi continued with the lecture. But it was, you know, he, he gave that detail of the story. And it was inspiring. After his talk, everyone left, except for one older man. Who remained in his, seats, in his seat, just thinking deeply. It seemed as if he was stressed. He was either crying or, or not feeling well. So the rabbi walked over to this older man and said, Sir, is everything okay? The man responded, Where did you hear this story about the cigarette on Shabbos? He didn't even look at the rabbi. He was just shaken up. The rabbi says, I really don't know. I, I heard it a while back and I don't even remember who actually told it to me. The man then looked up at the rabbi and said, I was that boy. He then asked the rabbi to go outside and for, to, and for the two to go on a walk together. And then he told the rabbi this story. This incident occurred in the 1920s when the Chofetz Chaim was in his 80s. I was completely frightened to have to go into his house and have to face the Chofetz Chaim. But when I entered the home, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that he, this, the Chofetz Chaim lived in poverty. I couldn't understand how a man of such a high level, such a high stature, lived in such a hard condition. He never expected that. And then suddenly he was in the room and he realized the Chofetz Chaim entered the room and the Chofetz Chaim was extremely, like, uh, he was very short in height. And at the time, this man was a teenager and the Chofetz Chaim only went up to that ma the teenager's shoulders. As they looked at each other, the Chofetz Chaim grabbed the hand of the younger boy and held it tenderly in between both of his hands. Then he took his hand up to the face, up to the Chofetz, the Chofetz Chaim took the young boy's hand up to his face and, he, and the Chofetz Chaim was crying. The Chofetz Chaim closed his eyes and his eyes were filled with tears. The Chofetz Chaim said then to the young boy, Shabbos, and he started to cry and he was still holding both hands. And then he was crying even greater, and he, and he said again, Shabbos, Shabbos, the holy Shabbos. And then the young boy's heart started pounding, 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 pounding. More frightened, the boy said he was more, uh, the older man was saying about when he was a younger boy, in this story, that he was more frightened at this moment than he had ever been before. And then the tears of the Chofetz Chaim started going down onto the boy's hand. And he said it felt as if a boiling water went onto his hand. When the tear of the Chofetz Chaim went onto his hand, it feels like boiling water went onto his hand. He says he could still feel it today. He says, I can't describe to you how great the pain I felt when I, when I, when I knew I made the tzaddik cry. But I did, not, I did not feel that the tzaddik was mad at me, but rather he was sad and he was afraid for me. He was frightened at what the consequences could be of what I did. The elderly man telling the story then looks at the rabbi and shows him the hand. He says, it's as if I have a scar. I have a spiritual scar on my hand from this event. And it's a constant reminder of the holy Shabbos.
I, I found this story remarkably inspiring and it shows the greatness of the Chafetz Chaim. It shows that he didn't want to expel the boy Chas Shalom. He recognized that everybody goes through difficulties and people have challenges. He recognized it was not about getting angry at the boy. But the Chafetz Chaim genuinely, genuinely felt terrible because of this. He felt sad for the boy. He was in pain for the boy. He was afraid for what could be. And the boy felt that. The boy didn't feel like he was getting yelled at. He felt like he genuinely caused pain to the tzaddik. And the way the, the, the tzaddik, the Chafetz Chaim, dealt with the situation caused the boy to never, ever break, desecrate the Shabbos again. So it shows us when we're dealing with people that we want to correct people in the way they're living about, going about their lives, the way is not to get angry at people, but to genuinely show them how much you care and how much you want them to do the right thing. And that, if you really show them how much you care and how, how serious this really is, they will feel it and they will surely hear your words. Thank you. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing day. I, f I found this story on Chabad.org and I get all the credit goes to them for sharing this wonderful story.